Welcome everyone to our Ask the Team event for Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And I am Kathy Moya. I'm going to be hosting this today and we have our fantastic team with us here. So we're going to do some introductions, although we do have a few people who are still working with the technology to get into this meeting. So uh, we'll, we'll take them whenever they can get here. So starting off, uh, we have Matt, who is a principal software engineer with us. And today's icebreaker is if you could be any character in a book or a movie, who would you choose to be? Hey, Kathy. Uh, I think right now it would be uh, Flint Lockwood from the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs movies. Uh, the idea of a machine that spits out perfect cheeseburgers whenever you want just sounds really great right now. That's great. OK, uh, let's see. Did we get David yet? We still I think we're it's one of our people who's having some technical difficulties. No, OK, uh, so let's go to Peter Orenberg. If you could be any character in a book or movie, who would you be? Hey, Kathy, if I could be a, any character, I think I would be Iron Man because he's a good combination of he's a superhero, but he really relies on technology. Doesn't really have any superpowers. Awesome. OK, uh, next we have Shift the Tell, program manager. Who would hey, you Kathy. Be? Uh, yeah, if I could be any character, I'd pick uh, Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. Um, <laughs> was lost in New York and still made his way out. So that's always nice. Very inventive. Good skills in program management. Uh, Dave Randall, Senior Program Manager. If you could be any character in a book or movie, who would you choose? Hey, everyone. Um, if I could be anybody, I would be the cat in the hat because I think the cat in the hat absolutely made the most fun out of being at home. Uh, so I think that would be just a fantastic uh, set of activities to do. Be a little mischievous. <laughs> Great. And Jamie Silvestri, Principal Program Manager, if you could be anyone in a book or movie, who would you be? Uh, you're muted, Jamie. Sorry about that. I picked Jack Ryan and uh, similar to Peter, I liked uh, his combination of action and brains. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, I know Alina was having some difficulties getting in. Uh, so we should have Alina Wu and of course, David James joining us as soon as we can figure out the technology here. Looks like Alina. Oh, oh, Alina, Alina just join us. Alina, Sorry you're just in time. Sorry for the hiccup. No worry. So if you could be any character in a book or movie, who would you choose to be? OK, so I, we've been watching a lot of Harry Potter as quarantine, so my dream character would be Professor McGonagall. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would go with Hermione because I mean that that bag that she had, the bag that you could pull everything out of. I just I want one of those. Very I much. get that. She goes through a lot, though. That's the only reason why I didn't say her. <laughs> All right, well, uh, David James needs no introduction, so at some point he's going to be joining us when we can get him in here. And in the meantime, uh, let's just keep moving through our setup here. So agenda, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the logistics of how we're going to run this session and then we'll just go right into the question and answer and we'll have until uh, 4.15 Redmond time, whatever the, the hour is in your local time. We are using the chat box. If you haven't been to a Teams live event before, or even if you have, you should have a little tab up there where you can ask questions. And uh, we will not be pu necessarily publishing everything. Um, if you have private questions for us, we may just answer those individually. But if it's a question for the whole team, what we'll do is publish those questions and then they'll show up in the, the track there. You can choose to post it anonymously if you like or use your name. That's totally up to you. And then what we'll ask you to do is give the thumbs up, the upvote to the questions that you like the most. And on our side, we'll be watching those and answering those in the order that of uh, who's getting the most upvotes. And uh, please help us out here. You know, we we love hearing that you're from, you know, South Dakota or or Guam or. Uh, <laughs> Uh, India, but um, we, we are going to be trying to 
pull through those and figure out which are the actual questions that we want to promote. So keeping it focused on the questions is just going to help us promote the ones more quickly that we need. Mm -hmm. And there is the Microsoft Code of Conduct. Uh, we are asking you to all keep it polite, keep it professional. If you need to read the Code of Conduct in detail, it is at mybill.microsoft.com. So uh, we had our experts that we were introducing you to here. And this is the list of the topics that we have represented. We may be able to pull other people from our team in or ask them in some back channel if they have additional questions. But other than that, um, we're going to go ahead and open it up. So let me see what we have in the chat window over here. So uh, the first one that I see is what's the story on uninstalling apps from Windows devices that was installed with the company portal? I often see them show up as failed to install if the user uninstalled them from add remove programs. Is that one? That, Matt? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> So based on the uh, the parameters there, I'm assuming that's discussing Win32 apps deployed through Intune. Uh, the 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 install detection is based on looking at whatever you configured for detecting the installation of the app later. If you uninstall manually, then it treats that as a an unexpected you know disappearance of the app. So you see a fail to install because it reevaluates the detection conditions afterward. Uh, there should be if you want to uninstall and have it show up as uh, you know not a failed status you would deploy a specific uninstall uh, assignment policy so that will cause the app to be uninstalled and the detection will trigger normally that way okay uh so let's see Trying to get used to some of these uh, new controls here. So I'm sending some questions over to the chat window. And we'll give people a chance to vote those up. And let's see if we've got any that are rising to the top over here. So reminder, just go ahead and uh, hit the thumbs up for any questions that you see that you like that you want to pop up here and I see one that has some upvote here. So Ter Terry Miller, University of Michigan says, what's the future for delegated administration in MS Intune? Is there something like limiting collections or administrative units on the roadmap for Intune? Uh, this is Dave, I'll take that one. So in uh, Intune, you know, we've got a fairly robust uh, role-based access control model with a lot of different permissions. And uh, we've also been working closely with the Azure Active Directory team. And they've got a large set of roles. And so longer term, I think you'll see that we've got some convergence between AAD roles and Intune roles, but that's something that takes a lot of coordination on, on both sides to do. So definitely an area that we're uh, spending time investigating and working with architecturally with the Azure AD team. Great. OK, I think we've got most of the questions published over here, so I'm going to flip back and see. All right, uh, another most like question. How has COVID-19 changed the shape of the MEM product? Has it brought any product innovations to the forefront or moved any items to the back burner? And uh, I see Peter Orenberg raising his hand there. So over to Peter. Yeah, so in our most recent uh, planning for uh, the future roadmap, the next six months, we have taken into account some of the COVID-19 changes that have come. 
Um, some of this has just been on scale because we've had a we've had a lot of interest of people moving much uh, faster to the cloud. So we've had to deal with some scale stuff, and we've also had to uh, put some features that we had in the back burner. Um, prioritize them so that they could help some of the COVID-19 work from home work from home scenarios that um, IT has different IT admins have definitely put in the forefront. Um, I don't really think it's put much to the back burner uh, as far as product innovation goes. We are still looking at that and we're still looking to move forward. All right, great. Uh, the next most asked question, are there plans to enable on-prem AD join during an autopilot deployment of a device which is out on the internet? This is a door that would unlock the service to so many enterprises who still have a need to use Active Directory, perhaps via the ODJ connector, which already performs the join or Azure AD. Uh, I don't have an autopilot expert on here, but is there anyone who knows that? Or if not, then maybe we can uh, go and see if we can Grab somebody. No. no. OK. Uh, maybe Aaron or Gabby, if one of you could uh, maybe reach out and see. I don't know if we can get uh, Hina or any house or, or someone, since that's going to be the autopilot. Uh, next one, um, let's see, I don't think we have David yet, but maybe someone knows. Will the remote control over CMG be released soon? <laughs> If anyone on this group who could answer that. No. OK. Uh, Zeb says, I just left a really cool session about Windows Package Manager. Are there any plans to integrate it with MEM? I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, respond. OK. Uh, so yeah, I, I took a look at Windows Package Manager as well from some of the build sessions that happened. Uh, Package Manager is interesting in that they allow you both to connect with public repositories as well as private repositories. I don't know if that's part of the current release, but we'll definitely reach out to the Package Manager team and see if, uh, what we can do to have Intune or SCCM be repositories that you can connect directly with. Right now, we don't have anything on the roadmap, so um, that's something that we'll engage with that team about going forward. All right, thanks. Uh, next question from Garth MJ. Are there any plans to allow Intune to inventory custom items? don't have our inventory people on here. Is there anyone going to take a whack at that? Or maybe we can uh, ask behind? No? OK. Uh, so we'll see if we can track down oh. an answer on that one. I'll, okay. I'll see if I can. <laughs> I, I know Garth has asked this question uh, a few times. He and I have had some uh, Ignite hallway conversations about it. I think every opportunity that you get, Garth, you've been in my ear on this one. And uh, I will say that I've continued to have conversations, yeah, conversations with the inventory with the for figuring out best ways that you can extend the inventory. I know that's high on your priority list. So it's absolutely not forgotten. And uh, hopefully we can find somebody who's got a little bit more current answer on it. But I know that that's an area that a lot of customers are also interested in. So thanks for bringing that up. OK, uh, so Michael Niehaus just told me that he is listening, just not presenting. So uh, let's see if we can figure out a way to proxy this. Um, uh, so Michael Niehaus, I, there's a, a Teams channel that's back in uh, under the Intune Teams called Build 2020. If you want to throw any answers for that in that channel, that's a way that I can pick them up pretty easily there. Let's see what else we've got high on the list here. Uh, will there be any equivalent 
to resultant set of policy for end user devices. I'm unable to see which pol policies are which policy settings are actually getting applied to the workstation. The info screen is not enough. The logs are limited as well. No. Uh. Um. Yeah, I wonder if we can get Aswari or oh, Dave. Do you think you can? I know Aswari or yeah. Matt are probably the ones. Right. Yeah, I'll um, I'll give it a shot. So one of the things that we've been working on is the policy infrastructure in Intune, and we've got some updates that that you'll see over the coming months to improve the overall Windows policy deployment experience within Intune. We know that it's a little bit challenging today, and one of the things that we're doing as part of that process is we're building out more of a um, conflict resolution at the time of deployment. So you'll have the ability to understand the impact of the settings that you're setting out to those devices. I know that mm -hmm. you have RSOP on the client side today, but what we're trying to do is move that process a little bit more forward so that as you're in the as you're creating your policies and you're targeting them for deployment, you've got a good early indication that there can be conflicts between the policies that are there and uh, in, in any of the different policies that you're deploying out to those devices. So right now there isn't a client side plan, it's more preventative on the server side. And we know that, uh, that that's an area that will be really helpful if it's strong and, and absolutely correct in terms of conflict for policy settings that go across different policies that you're deploying out to clients. So that's our current approach. And uh, we'd, we'd love to continue to hear from you if you think that once we get to that point, it's still insufficient and you need additional data that's coming from the client side only. Great, thanks Dave. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Um, yeah, so I got the, an answer from Michael Niehaus. So uh, reading in my other computer here on the question about autopilot hybrid AAD join over the internet. This is in private preview at the moment. We expect to be in public preview next month. This works using a VPN connection to enable the user to sign in. Credentials need to be validated by a domain controller. The rest of the process already works over the internet. So private preview coming soon. Uh, follow Michael Niehaus if you aren't already following him on Twitter. I am sure that when that is available that he'll be letting everybody know. Uh, let's see, next most voted question. Let's see, we've got some new ones coming in. I haven't been able to uh, pop over in advance, so I don't know if Aaron or Gabby, if you can uh, be promoting some more of the questions there while I'm reading the next one here. Uh, private preview of endpoint analytics looks awesome. When can we expect this to GA? Anyone who can grab that one? It's probably a David James question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're still trying to get David on here. A little while, um, and hopefully you've had an opportunity to try it out. But uh, I haven't seen a, a scheduled timeline for getting it to GA and pulling it out of Tech Preview. So um, hopefully when David gets back on, we'll uh, remember to go back to that particular question. All right, yeah, I'm leaving him in the, the queue here. Okay. Uh, are there any plans to further integrate Endpoint Manager with the rest of System Center, SCOM, SESM? System Center Operations Manager, Service Manager. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one, Kathy. did send you live, where'd you go? There we go, he's back. Okay. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you, Peter. There is no plans uh, in the near future for us to um, to support that in, in the current roadmap. Okay. And let's see, I just got a note from David James. They're still trying to get him in here. So hold some of those questions till we get him. 
Let's see. The next most, there's currently no option to uninstall available Win32 apps within the company portal. Will this be implemented in the future? Sorry, could you reread that one, Kathy? Yeah, there is currently no option to uninstall available Win32 apps within the company portal. Will this be implemented in the future? Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, who's that? Was that? Okay, great. Yep. So, yep, that's on the roadmap. Uh, uninstall, uh, repair, and update uh, various application types is on the roadmap in the company portal. Uh, can not give you a fixed timeline, but work is underway. Okay. Trying to look at multiple screens here. Okay, the next most. Um, What, when is the support VPN connectivity for autopilot hybrid enrollment coming? Is it available yet? So that sounds like a Michael Niehaus question, unless somebody here has some inside scoop. So Michael, I'll uh, check on our, our Teams channel back there. Uh, oh, okay, Avi sent me something. Avi Prasad says, on the question about endpoint analytics, we are close. Right now, our integration with productivity score is almost completed, just a few minor bugs, snags that we're digging through. We have also opened up a private preview, uh, and there is a sign up form. So give me a minute to shift between computers and I can get that form announced in the chat window. So thank you, Avi. Team play here. Um, okay, so I'll answer that one. Oh, okay. Neil says for the uh, the support VPN connectivity, that's actually the same as before. Private preview now, public next month ish. Remember, we always you know moderate our when will things be live. Uh, we have M365 E5. Can we manage our on-prem servers with Microsoft Endpoint Manager? Anybody want to take that one? No. I will point out that we did call this one Ask the Team. It's not Ask Me Anything. We will try to get some answers for these. Uh, just focusing on the ones, the people that we've got here. What is the relationship between Intune and Azure AD? Do Intune devices authenticate against Azure AD devices? I'm gonna take a stab at that one. Uh, I could take a general stab at that. I'm not sure about authenticating against Azure AD devices. Uh, Intune does integrate against Azure, Azure AD. That is our identity provider for all components of the system. I'm not quite. Yeah, I, let me, I, there's a couple other things maybe they, they mean by this, but it, uh, Intune is very closely tied with conditional access as well, uh, which of course goes through uh, Azure AD. Uh, so when you're talking about conditional access policies like require a compliant device, then we're working closely with AAD on that where we're determining device compliance, but AAD is the one who's determining whether or not you have access to that cloud resource. So not sure if those are the areas they were going with that, but you know, as Matt said, we use Azure AD as our uh, authentication for our own stuff, but we also support providing Azure AD information about whether or not a device is compliant in order to get uh, access to AED protected resources. Okay. Um, what are the best practices for migrating to MSIX packages from existing packages? You know, that'd be more of a Win32 app expert to crack at it or? Okay, I can give a, I can give a, a broad answer there too. Uh, okay. 
I'm not sure about the company wide recommended guidance, but the in terms of the migration uh, effectively uh, for depending on your package formats. If, for example, if you're using Apex, MSIX is really nothing more than a rename at this point. Uh, same thing for uh, repackaging existing applications into the MSIX format. It's mostly a tooling change, uh, not really a difference in, in packaging or structure. OK. Uh, here's one that I think we have more of the right people, or at least they can grab the right people. What are the new features coming with Intune Mac OS support? Yeah, give me a second on that one, Kathy. Okay. I'll, I'll pull that one up. OK, so Peter's going to go grab that. So move on to uh, what is the relationship between Intune? Oh, no, we already did that one. Uh, get that one. Uh, are there plans to create a configuration manager API? We currently use the SDK, but would like to change frameworks, and this library is keeping us back. Sorry, can you repeat that, Kathy? Yeah, are there plans to create a configuration manager API? We mm -hmm. currently use the SDK, but would like to change frameworks, and this library is keeping us back. Do we need some more detail on that one? Um, no, one of the things that we have been doing as part of the tenant attach is allowing you to call the Microsoft Graph APIs, which are, um, they're connecting to Intune, and then those Graph APIs will forward down various requests to your SCCM hierarchy. So for example, you can um, forward some of the device actions. They'll go through the existing RESTful API and in Intune down to your SCCM hierarchy if you've done a tenant attach. So we're continuing to expand out the capabilities of the calls that go from Intune to SCCM, but in terms of their being a uh, equivalent type of RESTful API or Microsoft Graph implementation for SCCM native. Um, that's not something that I'm aware of that's on the roadmap right now. Oh, uh, and Aaron just put some links in the chat window, the docs for the Config Man Manager Administrative Service REST API. Hmm. Excellent. OK, so here's what I know DJM is, is listening, trying to get in on the call here. So uh, I don't know if you can get this one or maybe someone can ping Mark Sylvie. Has there been any development in dark mode for configuration manager on the desktop client? <laughs> so DJM, I don't know if you're listening, if you can answer that one. Uh, did we get an answer on the Mac one? Yeah, we did. Sorry. OK. Uh, so uh, I was going to say the Big thing on the Mac is that we're going to continue um, investing in uh, sidecar for, or uh, app management. This includes custom attributes, the ability to uninstall apps, and improving our reporting of, of, among the apps. We're also um, we will also be continuing to do better uh, single sign-on. Um, they have a single sign on environment on Mac. And uh, I think that is what we that is the major investment we have for the next six months. We're also looking to improve enrollment is the other item. All right. Thank you. Scroll back through here. Um, when will I be able to integrate a config manager task sequence into the autopilot enrollment process? Uh, let me scoot back and see if uh, Michael Niehaus, if you have any thoughts on that one. Or uh, I don't know, Aaron, if you have any information from the, uh, from the doc side. Oh, here's one that everybody should be able to pop in on. What upcoming feature is the team most excited about? So I would say everybody can take a turn on that one. Who would want to go first? What are you most excited about? Well, uh, this is Dave. I'll, I'll 
I've got an answer that I put in the published, but I'll go ahead and share it with the rest of the team. So one of the areas that uh, for role based access control, you've had to assign an Intune license to all of your Intune administrators, and we've got work underway right now to remove that limitation. So you'll no longer need to assign licenses to your users. So that's one that I'm personally excited about finally coming to fruition. Okay, who else? I was excited about something. Matt? So uh, not coming over from PM land, I, I'm pretty limited in what I know has been publicly announced. So I guess it's <laughs> actually talk about being coming down the pipe, but one that I do know because we have it in prior preview now is uh, on the Windows company portal side, integration of configuration manager apps. So the company portal will be able to work with your configuration manager client on a Windows desktop to uh, provide you uh, the listing of your available allocations, uh, do install management, uh, and so we'll kind of combine those two mem products into one uh, user portal. Great. Anyone else have something they're excited about coming? Shiv? Shiv, you're on mute. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, so for those of you that have uh, been through the infamous uh, BitLocker blue screen where you have to enter, uh, you know, that big 25 digit code, um, there's going to be new functionality to uh, do self-service key recovery uh, from your mobile phone, uh, which is a little bit easier than remembering that uh, long website where you have to go authenticate again. So um, that's one of the things I'm most excited about. Uh, give me a second here. I am trying to get David James the link that he needs. <laughs> We're so close. And I can go really quick, Kathy, while you go for it. Work that out. So um, one of the things that I've, I'm most excited about over the past maybe almost two years now, we've been working on getting Edge Mobile up to speed with MAM and all of our data protection and app config policies. So we're at a million users now across iOS and Android. So the products come a long way, we've matured a lot, and I'm really excited for more customers to get a hold of it and help it kind of advance their app protection story. Great, thank you. And uh, I got an answer on the autopilot one from Adam Gross, who's one of our fabulous MVPs, uh, about the task sequence and autopilot. Uh, he says there is uh, a new feature called bootstrapping the task sequence. And uh, he gave me a link in what's new in version 2002 in the config man docs uh, regarding triggering a task sequence and autopilot. It allows you to complete the autopilot process Install a configuration manager client to co-manage the device. The client will immediately launch a task sequence to complete the process. So I'll uh, I'll try to get that link in there. Or actually, um, Adam, if you post it as a question, we can just promote that link and just put your name in there so that we know it came from you, and then we'll we'll know it's the uh, the link to the docs. So thanks for thanks for the assist. Okay, did anyone else have a question that or a, a feature that they were excited about that they wanted to? Jump in with. Or should we go on to the next one? I'm not, not seeing any waving hands. Okay. Uh, so the next one is. Next one we haven't answered or skipped. Um, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to answer this one with the people. We have any plans to improve the software center experience? We now have emails that can be sent to admins to approve, but there is no option to add a comment. I think that one we should probably wait until we get DJAM on here. Yeah, that's a DJAM one. OK. Uh, and just a reminder, read through what's in the published queue and vote those up because I'm taking the ones in the order of the most thumbs up on those. Uh, Walker says, we've seen the admin service grow and improve significantly over the last year or so. What's an upcoming feature of the admin service you're most excited about? So I, I don't know, is that the um, the new admin, into an admin console? When they say admin service? I'm going to assume it's the new admin. Dave, do you have? 
No, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not clear on the question either. Okay, well, if it is the new admin console, the DMAT console, is there anything you're particularly excited about there? Oh, absolutely. The uh, all the new security focus. So in the admin console, which you can get to now by endpoint.microsoft.com, we have the security center, which allows you to configure security focused policies and deploy them and see security focused uh, statistics and uh, everything everything security related. I know that there's a lot of customers who have been using security products and we're really um, making a concerted effort to consolidate all of the security that you're configuring, whether it's firewall policy, uh, AV policy, all of those are consolidated in single. So that's one thing that we've, we made a huge effort recently on. So please try it out and let us know what you think. Okay, uh, so Adam Gross sent me another message. The admin service is part of what's enabling tenant attached to work. It's amazing. I'm still not sure that we have anybody who can answer that though with uh, with who we've got. Um, next most voted up question. Let's see, there's another software center, so we're going to wait on DJM for that one. Um, do we have any public documentation available for endpoint analytics? Uh, maybe that's something, Aaron, if you can uh, dig up any of those links. Uh, oh, here's one I know we have the people for. What kind of integration of Microsoft Graph are we going to see in Endpoint Manager? Dave? Uh, well, we have uh, a whole host of Microsoft Graph based APIs that are that are currently available for connecting to your Intune. And I mentioned a little bit about when you have done tenant attach, we can also forward some of those actions down to your SCCM hierarchy. So in fact, everything that you do in the Intune console today goes through Microsoft Graph. So if you're uh, interested in understanding specifically the calls that are made, one of the little tips that I learned, which has been super helpful for me, is just to hit F12 in your browser and that goes over to developer mode and you can actually trace every one of the API calls via Microsoft Graph that the console does. So let's say, for example, you want to see what happens when you create a policy. You can you can view that specific API call and all the data that we send to the back end. So it's easy, easily discoverable and replicatable. And if you go to graph.microsoft.io, that website is the entry point for all things Microsoft Graph, including all the API reference documentation, uh, samples, and information about the APIs that are available in preview, as well as those that have been finalized and made available in the V1O branch. Okay. And just while we got you on camera there, uh, I saw that you asked for some clarification from Fitz S. Fitz, uh, you asked if there are plans to enhance the Intune APIs, but if you could type in the uh, the chat window there and just let us know more specifically what kind of enhancements you're looking for. Uh, we also do have our focus groups coming up. Uh, we have the focus group on automation. It's going to be happening at 2.30 in the morning for us Pacific time, but Dave will be there. I will be there. We'll, we'll have a couple other devs from the API team on there. So um, I know that they have opened up some new slots in the focus groups because what was happening is um, people were signing up and then coming and realizing, no, it's a focus group that they're the ones who are talking, we're the ones who are listening and, and bowing out. So uh, th there may be some spaces that have opened up in, in some of those. And Kathy, if I can just tack on a little bit to Dave's last answer. Um, yep. As he said, most of the APIs are fully documented and all the APIs, uh, anything that we uh, ship every every month will automatically be documented as a prerequisite for shipping in the Graph API documentation. There's also uh, a public GitHub repo full of sample Intune PowerShell scripts for working with uh, our Graph API that give you examples and, and existing code to help handle the authentication, handle uh, gets, puts, patches, and, and give you a pretty, pretty detailed view of all the API availability. Great, thanks. Uh, let's see, another DJAM question. 
Uh, so Shiv answered this in the chat window. Um, what is the roadmap for a seamless tool for migrating GPO settings to MDM policies? So uh, we currently have a tool in uh, in private preview and uh, through Aswari's uh, email address up there. So please don't all spam Aswari too much. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do in, uh, in making that available for you. Uh, can the Windows apps be easier to install? Popular apps such as Adobe Reader for Windows 10. The silent install is not well documented. And <coughs> excuse me, there are a lot of XE versions out there. Intune package only helps if you know the silent install arguments. So anyone who might be able to comment on install? I can, yeah, I, can, I can't give you uh, details about the team that's working on that, but I can do a quick pitch. Uh, yeah, that there is a constant uh, stream of feedback on Win32 apps in Intune and the packaging tool and uh, deployment issues and you know, feature sets and that. So they are pretty much taking constant feedback on that availability and you know fixing any things that comes up. So if you encounter specific issues with certain apps, uh, provide the feedback through uh, whatever channel that you have available to you from your support contacts. Uh, I will say the the team predicated most of the design of the Win32 app installs in Intune on the number one uh, on-premise application management solution for Windows for decades, which of course is Configuration Manager. So their their ultimate goal is to emulate as much of the install behaviors that are available there. Uh, but there are some restrictions based on how the Intune uh, agent is working. So any app-specific behaviors, obviously there's a pretty rich ecosystem of Win32 apps that all do very fun, and interesting things in their custom install behaviors. So a lot of times those will be one-off for applications. And so the team just needs feedback on what's working and what's not working to tackle the next set of issues. Okay, and then there's one that's somewhat related. So Matt, I don't know if, if you'd be able to answer this one as well. Uh, it says, hi everyone, I am new to Intune and Endpoint Manager. As a Microsoft partner, we have free licenses for Intune. That way I don't have to buy a remote management tool while working from home. I have deployed this so I can install apps to employees, Windows 10 devices that are AED joined. Some apps are XE installers such as Adobe Reader. The Intune package utility is not the easiest to use since Adobe silent install is not well documented. So I don't know if that's you know, the same thing or if there's any other slant on that. Uh, yeah, so the even without the, the Intune packaging tool, there is some basic support for MSI based installs in Intune without uh, deploying the agent, but that doesn't work very well for anything with any kind of complexity, which Adobe's installers wouldn't be. So again, like I said, the, the your best bets are to either report the issues to the team to get feedback on the specific apps. Uh, certainly, larger you know larger apps with bigger install bases will get some get more attention, uh, as there's a pretty vibrant community of MVPs and uh, Reddit posters as well. That all you know all, all those various forums where people share a lot of those tips and tricks for what the correct set of command lines are uh, to get those apps to install. Um, and the packaging tool also doesn't restrict you to just using the MSI itself. If you find that you can uh, use custom command lines or write your own scripts to handle the, the installers, the packaging tool doesn't restrict you to just running the MSI. You can actually set the target for the install to be your own script or your own executable that knows how to, to use the, you know, for instance, Adobe, you know, required install command lines that might not be easily parsed from the MSI itself. All right. Um, Peter, I don't know if this is one that you might be able to answer or know somebody. Uh, you can now run bash scripts on a schedule on Mac OS. When is this configuration option coming to the portal? Or actually, maybe Dave, a portal for PowerShell scripts instead of fiddling reverse engineering the graph API. So either one of you. I'm not sure I need to need to reread that question again. Uh, so running bash scripts on a schedule on Mac OS. Mm. So new ability they released there, but they want to be able to configure running the scripts uh, to the portal for PowerShell scripts. I'm not quite sure what it means to the portal. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is using the sidecar for PowerShell. I I think um, 
Ah, okay. So I, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to this one. I don't think we have a date yet on it. Okay. I think we're trying to finish up and then we'll look at doing um, PowerShell and more uh, gra graph options. But right now we're just trying to finish out the feature set. Okay. Uh, here's one. We currently do not leverage co-management. What are some initial benefits to tenant attaching our ConfigMan infrastructure to MEM if we do not intend to immediately leverage co-management? Anyone got anything for that? Let me see. Still working on getting DJM in. <laughs> Got a few minutes left here. Uh, I don't know if we have anyone for this. Are there any plans to enable integration with third party software asset management tools like Flexera FNMS? Uh, this is Dave. So right now, um, I haven't seen any plans or any roadmap discussions for integrating the software asset management. Okay. Uh, so Matthew Hudson, another one of our MVPs, was asking. Oh, DJM's typing some benefits, so I'll give him a minute to type. Um, but uh, Matthew was asking, with so many companies working from home, do we see any Intune infrastructure stresses not previously seen? And Alina gave a, a bit of an answer there. I don't know, Alina, do you want to elaborate on that? Um, I, I sure. I so I was um, rephrasing something that I think Peter mentioned at the beginning of the call. Um, just that uh, we've really been investing more in scalability for a while now, but in particular with the current uh, circumstances. So um, I don't know that we have specifics to speak to that we've seen stress on, but we've definitely been trying to make that as seamless as possible for all our customers. I, I could add on a little bit, Kathy. OK. So we've actually had the the opposite situation. We've uh, we've actually had enough uh, scale support and capacity in Intune that we've actually been returning cores to the Azure team to make them available to customers so that we can keep customer workloads up and running in their own web applications and services. So we actually, if, if anything, we had it, we had to surf it. Wow, that's awesome. All right, pop back down. One of our, I was going to say one of our point on that. Sorry, Kathy. One of our point on that is while we're trying to do all this too, and while we've we want to make sure this service scales. We are not, we are trying to make sure we don't um, uh, impact the SLA or custom scenarios or have any impact on being able to get policy down to devices and um, do th do critical uh, security tasks like selective wipe or wiping of a device. Okay. Um. All right, so David James uh, says that they can't fix his device. The preview builds that he has on Teams aren't letting him get into this tenant. So he did proxy me an answer on the benefits of tenant attach. So let me read what we've got there. Uh, all devices show up in the Intune UI. So you're seeing them, you know, single pane of glass. Uh, actions from Intune UI on configuration manager devices. So uh, simplified management there. Desktop analytics and productivity score will be available for those devices in the um, MEM AC. I'm guessing that's the MEM admin console. And uh, yeah, so those are three advantages to tenant attach, even if you're not going to be doing the, the rest of the co-management piece there. And uh, Adam's pinging me saying there are more things coming. Uh, devices from your configuration manager environment, including servers, will be synced to your Intune tenant and allow you to perform basic actions on the client, like syncing client policies and eventually installing applications. And so it gave me a couple of links there and I'm behind in being able to, 
<laughs> juggle all of my links in. I've got too many screens and still not enough screens for all of this. And we got about 10 minutes left here. So, uh, and he says, that looks like David covered it in his. <laughs> it was proxying like mad. Uh, let's see. So again, um, vote up the questions here. There are a few. Um, so David, um, we have the question about will remote control over CMG be released soon? I don't know if you can throw me anything in the uh, the chat window. And let's see. Get a link for that one. Oh, uh, there was an MDAM question that I'd skipped over. I don't know, or maybe Aaron, uh, I don't know if you might know this. MBAM is moving into, it's not SCCM anymore, guys. It's it's Config Manager to do help desk resets. What are the ultimate plans for BitLocker keys? The MBAM implementation hasn't changed for a very long time, and it's not the easiest solution to get working well. I, I've seen no documentation for doing a migration from MBAM to Config Manager in, say, a servicing task sequence. I don't know if we have anyone who can jump in on that i can try to take a stab at that uh who's that no shift okay great thanks um so I guess the, the first question is, what are the plan for BitLocker keys? Um, so the first, um, and, and th there's a PM on the team um, I can loop you in with, uh, Aman, um, who can provide some more context for the SCCM or system uh, config man <laughs> implementation of, of uh, MBAM. But essentially what the goal is to get um, the keys from the MBAM, the database that MBAM has initially stored it in uh, and put it into an SCCM database that uh, requires a little bit less overhead. Um, and then if the if the the tenant is essentially uh, um, enable or wants to enable cloud um, cloud recovery, then they can port those keys over to either Azure AD or Active Directory um, to enable some key recovery scenarios when you're not actually on premise. Um, so in a scenario where everyone's working from home, you can still recover your keys if you copied your keys from both SCCM as well as into Azure AD. Awesome, thank you. All right, I have an answer from David on the uh, CMG. It is currently in private preview, not publicly preview. And so he's saying later rather than sooner, but you know we do have the preview going. And if you think you are ready to try it in production, have your Microsoft field folks reach out to us and we'll flight it. And, uh, but it is something that's gotta work through the back end. So you gotta work through your field people on that. Uh, let's see, and David, uh, private preview of endpoint analytics. Did we have a date on or uh, when we expect that to GA? Let's see if we can get that. All right, we got the MBAM question. Ah, reporting. Let's see, this one reporting has been notoriously poor in configuration manager. The data is all there, but unless you have a good SQL person, it's very difficult to get good data without buying reports. Are there any plans to integrate easier uh, with Power BI like interfaces for reports rather than SSRS? Um, that might be another DGEM question about uh, reporting. Uh, as far as the endpoint analytics, the GA is not yet announced. So on that one, just stay tuned. Uh, if you aren't already following David James on Twitter, you definitely need to be following David James on Twitter. Uh, at djammer with three M's. Uh, if somebody can throw that in the announcement window, that would be awesome. Um, oh, but he says you will you will see functionality coming every month for the next six months, and when we get enough feedback, it will go to GA. So, yeah, we want to make sure it's right before we we push anything out there. Uh, let's see another DGM question. Should we ever expect icons for packages in Configuration Manager Software Center? They still have a place. So we'll give him a minute to type on that one. Kathy, yes, I just saw a question come in from Mike on which policy is the most useful in Endpoint Manager. Um, I think I can take a stab at it and uh, Dave can help me as backup. Okay. 
Sure. All right. So um, part of Endpoint Manager or the Endpoint Security uh, node uh, includes um, certain cross-platform encryption settings um, as well as security baselines. Um, and I'd say probably one of the more useful ones is security baseline because um, it, uh, uh, prior to what uh, previously was done with policies is, is usually the admins have to determine what kind of policy they want to set and then also determine what kind of value they want to set for their uh, end users um, and then go through the targeting. Uh, with security baselines, we come up with the content. We work with um, security experts in the field, um, come up with content and then also come up with the values um, that are uh, more restrictive, essentially what Microsoft recommends um, for you to deploy. Um, so I would definitely start with security baseline and then add additional policies as uh, your your uh, IT um, sees fit. Dave, anything else you can cover in that? Yeah, I, I did mention earlier that we've got a fairly significant revamp of the policy uh, capabilities that's currently underway. And so one of the goals of that is to make it much easier for you to create policies either from baselines um, or create policies yourself that that are a little bit difficult to go choose from today. So uh, definitely keep your eye out for uh, public previews of updates to the policy system. Great, thanks. Um, got another answer from David James on the uh, the icons for packages question. Uh, there is no plan of record for putting icons for packages, but voted up in user voice. So configuration manager .user .com, and give us the scenarios that you want. Uh, we are considering task sequence icons now. And he's typing some more there. Uh, just got about a couple minutes here. I already got that one. Uh, for everyone else on the panel here, if you see any other questions that I have missed that maybe haven't uh, walked up here, if you want to grab them and just yell and we'll we'll get you answering those. I'm, this is Dave. I'm scrolling back. There was one that I that I saw that I was able to uh, share an update on. So let's see. I'm scrolling back to look at see if I can find that again. Um, so one of those, uh, Carlos said, can you post the rest call for every policy type? We're working to create a pipeline to introduce changes into prod, but I don't know the payload for each policy. So on that one, Carlos, I would suggest that you uh, just hit F12 at the time that you create a policy from the console and you'll be able to follow the network trace that also includes not just the API endpoint that you're calling, but it will also contain the policy payload or the, re the request body that goes along with that. So um, you at least have a way in the console of determining what Intune is creating and then uh, hopefully that at least lives, gives you the ability to put together um, the specific REST calls that are for each of the different policy types. Thanks, Dave. Uh, another answer from DJAM that we had the question about uh, Software Center and uh, improvements to the app approval workflow. He says, um, if he recalls, they, they wanted uh, <coughs> comment filed. Uh, so if, if it was being able to, to do some kind of a comment or really small improvements like that, what DJAM is suggesting is go to user voice and then we can triage it there. We do small improvements like that based on user voice feedback. So get it there and just like the questions here, vote, vote, vote them up. And let's see, it's 4.15. Um, panelists, anything else you think we should just grab off the pile here or do you think we should call I'm it good? I've got one other one. Uh, will okay. CSPs be expanded to encompass everything possible? Likely no. Uh, the reason being is because CSPs are developed by the Windows team for features that um, they're adding and they'll retroactively go back and add CSPs for items that, that have high priority. But some things like, for example, Internet Explorer 4 settings that were supported in group policy, they're not going to go create new CSPs for for old things that um, that are just no longer relevant or have been replaced. So gen generally, the answer is no. Uh, CSPs won't be expanded for everything possible. 
but um, as Intune gets new CSPs from the Windows team, we'll continue to incorporate those as they're as they're made available. I'll I'll just add just one add little note on top of that, Dave. Um, yeah. That we do support. Uh, M M MDM does support delivery of uh, ADMX backed policies. Uh, so if if you can represent the the things that you want to configure in ADMX, those can be delivered to the device. It's not not the same as a you know a direct you know first part first class CSP implementation, but it will get you to a way to deliver those policies. Awesome, thanks, Matt. And with that, we're going to have to wrap up, but I want to say thank you to everybody who made the time to come here and join us today. Uh, we appreciate your patience with some of our, our technology bumps here. Uh, I do want to give you the uh, links. Make sure that you fill out your build evals, please, please, please. A lot of groups went out and just canceled their in-person events and said, we're, we're just going to wait until we can get together in person. But Microsoft said, no, we're going to continue with some of our top tier events like Build and we're going to do it digital. So we got it digital. Uh, we need to know how you're doing, how, what you think of this, because this is going to impact how we look at future digital events down the road. So very important to fill out the evals on every single session that you're going to, please. And also we have some links here. Uh, I have some other links that people gave me. I'm going to be pasting them in the chat window, so uh, we're going to stop answering questions on voice, but I will give a couple minutes to throw things in the chat window before we kick y'all out of the meeting here. So thank you again. Really appreciate you being here. And panelists, a big uh, virtual round of applause. Oh, and somebody had asked about the, the sound. Um, when you go to share something, you just have to sh say share system sound, and it will start playing. So with that. We'll run out. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for being Thanks. an awesome moderator, too, Kathy. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. All right.